Hi guys, Shade here from City Saves the Day and I have another watercolor review for you guys. This time I'm going to be reviewing the Dalla Rowney Artist Grade Watercolor. Now these are a little bit difficult to find. I was actually looking for these and it was fairly difficult. Even though I have two huge art stores nearby me, neither of them actually had this brand in stock. I think I had to order these online from Jackson's Art and I got them on super discount, so I was really excited about that. You've probably heard of the Dollar Rowney Aquafine or Simply brands. You can find those in a lot of places, but the Artist brand is somehow kind of like a Sasquatch or something. You only very rarely find it. And I feel like it's always only available on closeout discount. I don't know. This is another one of the big English brands like Windsor & Newton. So let's check it out. These Daler Rowney watercolors come in five and 15 milliliter tubes. They're made in England. They're available in sets and open stock. There are 80 colors in the range and 22 of those have the highest level of light fastness. The colors that I will be reviewing today are Nickel Titanate Yellow, PY53, Indian Yellow, PY153, Quinacridone Red, PR209, Prussian Blue, PB27, and Burnt Umber, PBR7. So these are definitely artist grade watercolors. They're finely milled, they flow nicely. I really like this Nickel Titanate Yellow I am always looking for a really cool yellow and this is probably the coolest yellow on my palette. It's quite opaque, but that's something that's just a characteristic of the paint. I love this Indian yellow. It is like a perfect Florida orange. It's really juicy. That is a quality I'd say about a lot of the Daler Rowney colors is that they're kind of juicy. They remind me of something that I want to drink. Especially this quinacridone red. This looks like some kind of red, fruity, juicy drink. It's pretty weak for a quinacridone color. That's just really weird because normally a quinacridone color is just shooting across. And this one doesn't really seem to have really good dispersion or really good saturation. So I'm gonna assume that there's probably some kind of binder or filler in this color. It's still really pretty, but I think when I replace this color, I'll be replacing it with one from another brand. With this Prussian blue, it's very staining. It acts basically like you'd expect a Prussian blue to act. The burnt umber is really nice and lovely and deep and granulates a lot. I think that's the burnt umber that I have on my palette right now. Uh, unlike the other colors, I don't think I'm disappointed with the vibrancy of course, it's an earth color, so that's cheapest. So normally people don't cut corners in this kind of color. The colors are not too transparent or opaque. They seem to be about normal for the pigments. And the lifting also seems to be about normal. Okay, so we're gonna make a little mixing chart here using a triad including nickel titanate yellow, the quinacridone red, and the Prussian blue. This ended up being a really delicate triad and that's kind of to be expected because it's got the nickel titanate yellow in it so that's gonna make a lot of the colors a lot more delicate. 
But I think it's also just the characteristic of the Dela Rowney colors. They're just not as saturated as some other colors. Some people might have found the same thing with Winsor & Newton. They're kind of more muted. I don't know if that's because of fillers or binder or if there's just something about the way that the pigment is milled. Sometimes when pigments are milled incredibly finely, they end up looking a lot more muted. But I didn't really feel like these were muted in a low quality way. I really like the way the Nickel Titanate Yellow makes these kind of peachy colors when combined with the Clinacrete on Red. That's really nice. And the Clinacrete on Red makes an interesting purplish color when mixed with the Prussian Blue. Overall, it's just a really okay triad. Then I go on and I make a mixing chart with all of the colors and you can see that sort of muted look continuing on. It's a really sort of pastel-y combination of colors. Even though Prussian Blue and Aquinacridone shouldn't have made for quite a lot of punch. Probably the color that has the biggest amount of punch here is that Indian Yellow PY153. That is really nice and really vibrant. I actually really like the pastel -y tones that you can get with the Nickel Titanate Yellow and I use that all the time, especially for dusty plants or something like that. So to test out these colors, I decided to paint some rowan berries from the Dresden Botanical Garden. I decided to do these in a bit of a different way than I normally work. I normally work pretty controlled, but I kind of just felt like throwing colors everywhere. <laughs> but these paints didn't really have any problem with that. You can see how they spread out on the page. They claim that they don't make any hard edges, and I think they're probably right about that. I don't know if that's particularly much more than any other brand, but I'm not having any trouble with hard edges. I really like how the Clinicrino Red blends into the Indian Yellow in this first stage. Everything just looks really bright. Of course, I tone everything down with the Umber, As I continue layering, I don't really have any problems. Nothing's lifting up, nothing's getting muddy. Things are, well, there's a bit of muddiness, but I knew that would happen because umber is very granulating in this case. And when you layer too much with granulating colors, I'm not really a big fan of the sort of effect that you have in the end. But that's nothing about the brand. That's just something that happens when you do that.
Overall, these are good paints. I think that they can definitely be gotten at a bargain, and if you can get them at a bargain, for sure do that. Would I go out to look for these colors again? I don't know. I think you can get a lot of the same pigments in other brands with a lot more vibrancy. There's nothing really particular about them that stands out that would make me search for Dalarani Rider Colors as opposed to any other brand. I'm definitely not sad that I got these and I still use these paints because they're perfectly fine paints, but they're not something that I would go yelling on the rooftops about. So in the end, I give these a solid three stars out of five. They're good, they're functional, they're a little muted, but they get the job done. I would think about these somewhat like a sister to the Windsor & Newton paints. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and that it was informative. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye!